This video is a commentary and tour of the music room. I started looking through my computer and found hours of footage from this room dating back to 2015. All footage at this point is now archived here on YouTube. From these videos, I noticed that I have some things I would like to mention and share. That being setup and sound, drum setup, bass setup, guitar, vocals, and general comments. I approach this with a down-up strategy, starting with drums and ending with vocals at the top. 1. Setup and sound. The first thing with any room setup is that you don't know how you sound until you start playing with other people. This is because your sound gets lost and drowned out by acoustics in the room. In general, spread out from each other, have enough seating, and have a dedicated space for each player. You still want to be able to see each other for easy communication. In your area, you're going to want a tuner, a guitar stand, picks, extra cables, water, and most importantly, hearing protection. Be mindful of how much power per socket you're using. I have only one amp per socket with a supplementary power supply for effects pedals. Always have surge protectors and some kind of emergency shut off plan. There are even specific surge protectors for live sound that help protect your gear and filter out unwanted electrical noise. The greatest challenge for playing in a practice room is managing drum sounds. You don't need the best gear and you don't need to be the loudest. Please be mindful of each player in the room and your neighbors. Sound carries far without using any dampening methods. Like I said, the greatest challenge is with balancing drum sound and being able to hear each other. 2. Drums. I have tried many kit setups, facing the wall, fully enclosed, muffled, unmuffled, and I think this is the best setup for now. The only improvement I would make is investing in a custom drum enclosure. That is how effective this setup is. I rely on using many old rugs to dampen sound. Every drum kit needs a good rug to prevent sliding on the ground. These can also help. Some features of the drum set I enjoy is the baseball bat, block, suspended cymbal, trash cymbal, and foot pedal snare. I have muffled the bass drum by putting sweatshirts inside, blocking the front, and creating a barrier. The barrier is actually made with skateboard ramps, rugs, and clamps. The rugs face all around the kit, keeping sound more contained into this area. This makes it much easier for players to hear one another. As a side, I found around 10 rugs being thrown out, stuffed my car for transport, and later cleaned them with a machine like this. A problem is now created. The drummer has limited hearing because sound is now contained into this area. To compensate, I created what I refer to as a cheap solution to in-ear studio monitoring. This is a PA system. It is hooked up to the guitar amp and serves as a boost or secondary amp that will be discussed later. Sound is coming from the guitar amp to the PA and is outputted to this adapter. I can now use any pair of headphones with a 3.5 millimeter jack. You could even add a four channel headphone amp to this setup. That would allow other players to monitor sound within their own ear protection. Headphones under headphones, adjust levels, and now the illusion of sound. The drummer now hears themselves muffled while hearing guitar very clearly. This makes it so much easier to stay in time and play together. Three, bass setup. Now that drum sounds are pushed into the corner, bass sounds are not going to be lost within the bass drum or toms that have a lower frequency. I always elevate each amplifier to head level. This helps sound easily spread out and is far easier to hear other players with this method. I keep the bass amp facing horizontally across the room. If the bass amp is pointed directly at anyone, it'll make it incredibly difficult for players to hear anything other than overbearing bass sounds. Bass should be heard by the drummer and balanced right under the guitar, yet not overpowering them. I try to find a sweet spot between managing low and high frequencies on bass, so both are equally heard. You could even invest in a preamp that completely overhauls your amp into another amp style. The setup I use is Fender Rumble 350 with custom speakers, a distortion pedal, octave pedal, 
and a wireless system. Four, guitar. Feedback is going to be much worse with the full room of equipment and players. The more distortion, the louder you play, the worse the feedback. Always keep guitar knobs in the off position when starting the amp. Adjust the amp how loud you think the room is, then slowly turn up the guitar's volume knob. This amp is also elevated. I positioned it furthest away from the drums and the other equipment. This corner serves as the lowest feedback area. That is because the position is slightly behind and to the side of the amp. This helps avoid unwanted feedback. If experiencing feedback, try the tips mentioned in the description of this other video I made here. The setup I use is a Crate GT-1200H looper pedal, wah pedal, distortion pedal, and a silencer pedal. 5. Vocals Back to the PA. Now that we have a room full of players and equipment, what happens when we mix in a vocalist and microphone into an already loud room? This causes lots of feedback for the vocalist, as their microphone will pick up background sound. When this happens, vocalists might try to overcompensate with their sounds, which can be damaging to vocal cords. A proper microphone can help prevent this. Condenser mics will pick up everything, not what you want. A dynamic, cardioid, and live performance microphone is what you need. These are rugged and designed for excess stage noise and handling. Have the vocalist stand as far away as possible and as isolated from sounds. If the room is very loud, the vocalist can stand behind this rug as a makeshift vocal booth. A vocalist booth is ideal because it will help filter out unwanted sounds and focus desired sounds onto the microphone. The PA is pointed at the drum kit so that sound is not targeted directly at the vocalist, causing feedback. Here you can see the PA system is elevated to head level and directly opposite to the bass amp. The PA is angled slightly up, just enough for noise to bounce off upper walls and create a full room sound. The setup is a Sennheiser E835S microphone with a Behringer Ultratone K300FX PA system. 6. General Comments I started recording this room to view our old band in practice before we would play live concerts. I then wanted to capture various improvised jam sessions for our friends to review their own playing. As such, these videos were only filmed on various models of iPhone. It was never my initial intention to post these videos on YouTube. It is not until recent that I have decided to release videos publicly. I now believe these videos are better suited here than buried in an old computer's hard drive. I have many moments captured in memory and I wish I began recording earlier. The music sessions archived here and in my memory will always remain very special to me. I hope this video can help if you are interested in setting up your own music room. Thank you.